French Impressionism is one of the most well-known artistic movements in the world. When you hear Impressionism, you might think of famous French painters like Monet, Renoir, or Degas. Forget them. I'm talking about French Impressionism in cinema, which spanned over a completely different time period. Although they had similar intentions, motives, and ideals, they are two very different artistic movements. The French Impressionistic movement in film began around the end of the First World War and lasted throughout the 1920s. This French movement focused heavily on silent films and ended sort of at the end of the silent film era. The movement was also referred to as the first avant-garde or narrative film movement. French nationalism actively drove the Impressionist film movement. After the First World War, other countries picked up filming right where they had left off, but in France, filmmakers saw this as an opportunity to create new styles of filmmaking. They wanted to find new ways to please their audiences. They wanted something French. Louis Deluc, a prominent film director of the Impressionist movement, said that French cinema must be cinema. French cinema must be French. French filmmakers basically just started doing anything they could to produce things with artistic content. Many of these Impressionist films were actually very similar to the standard narrative films in other countries of the time. Their films usually featured random bursts of visual poetry that often depicted characters' emotions, but other time, it was just stuff that looked really cool. Either way, it worked. Quand j'ai trop le cafard, je m'en vais comme ça au hasard, toute seule. Comme je bois, je rentre en gaieté pour chercher de la volupté, toute seule. Puis un beau jour, quand je m'en irai, sans amis, sans fleurs, sans regrets, toute seule. With their growing desire to create unique films, French filmmakers experimented with new techniques for both filming and editing. Techniques involving nonlinear editing, innovative lighting, and other methods that would help tell the story's point of view. There were even attempts to portray dream sequences and fantasies using these new technologies and ideas. One highlight of the French Impressionist film movement was that filmmakers in France began to treat film like an actual art form, rather than just a means to retell stories, plays, ideas, and other random propaganda. They began to express themselves, but not directly. They wanted to express truths by creating experiences that would appeal to the audience's emotions, thus revealing the underlying truths of the art. They believed that mood and suggestion should take precedence over the plot. The French Impression and Film Movement influenced basically everything we know and love about film today. From ideas and experimentations and lighting, camera placement, to storytelling in general. The introduction of film as an art form opened the door for much more experimental practices in how filmmakers told their stories, as well as what kind of stories they could tell. Like poetry and painting, film began to focus on aesthetic appearances, visually and emotionally. They also became more driven to heighten the quality and content of their films through aesthetics and psychological depth by exploring the human mind. Germaine Dulac was a filmmaker who played a major role in the Impressionist movement. Her interest in filmmaking grew while traveling with her friend who was an actress. Deluc began to study film and decided to start a film company called DH Films with a fellow writer. The company made several films including The Enemy's Sisters, Venus the Victorious, and Mysterious George, along with other shorts of course. A film called Crazy Souls was Deluc's first big hit. She was highly praised for both writing and directing the film. She's best known as a filmmaker for her individualistic artistic impression. Many of her works are also considered an inspiration to the surrealism film movement. She experimented greatly with superimposition as a way to portray dream sequences, internality, and the mental subjectivity of her Impressionist films. Her film, The Smiling Madame Baudet, is a perfect example of the height of her work. In this scene specifically, Delac uses 
techniques and devices such as slow motion, distortion, and even superimposition to paint Madame Baudet's ever-changing emotional state and how she truly feels about her husband. Louis Dulluc, who I mentioned earlier, experimented in film in other simplistic ways. He focused on ordinary events in natural settings as opposed to wild adventures with unrealistic events. He paid great attention to the audience's reliance on a reality potentially existing beyond the silver screen. He also introduced the theory of photogenie to film and used it as a way to describe the ineffable qualities that elevated filmmaking to the level of art. Other impressionist filmmakers like Jean Epstein disagreed with Dulluc and described the photogenie as something that couldn't be forced or imposed. He believed the photogenie to be a moment that was like a flash of ecstasy in a film, a perfect, unpredictable combination of events, as he put it. Then you have Marcel Lebrier, who experimented with new lighting styles and used different lighting to imply different moods, situations, or the foreshadowing of events in the storyline as well as Abel Gantz's Napoleon, which introduced a widescreen film format. French Impressionist filmmakers made their marks because they weren't afraid to try new things and had intentions for the audience to have their own opinions as to what certain things meant. The audience's impressions, if you will, as well as the filmmaker's impressions on the audience. 